Hello, everyone, and peace of uh, Christ to all of you. Uh, today, our we have a very serious topic, so please invite your friends. And uh, if you are a Muslim, feel free to call me anytime you wish. Our Skype is open, and only I will take calls from Muslims for now. Uh, you know, I always see uh, people, they send me videos uh, made by Muslims, and this is how, actually, I make my topic. I don't prepare for a topic. Uh, you know, I see uh, Muslims making a statement and then we discuss what the Muslims complain Obviously the Muslim they have a lot of complaint about Christianity and uh, Obviously Christianity is very bad Disgusting and not only Christianity is very bad Judaism disgusting and the Muslims are disgusted by the teaching of Christianity and the teaching of Judaism and because both of them they are disgusting so the Muslims they like to show us how disgusting our belief is so today we are going to discuss the disgusting teaching which the Muslim don't like don't approve and something wrong with it and this is why I would like to see Muslims calling us because we want to hear the other side of the story you know, uh, the video which sent to me, it was meant by a guy, his name is Shamsi, something like this. Uh, and he was talking to uh, uh, two Swedish boys, they are maybe 19 years old. You know, th the question is, if a Muslim want to debate about Christianity, uh, why they don't come to us? I'm here almost every day and we stay for like a couple of hours. We are not like a, we do live podcast for 15 minutes and bye bye. And we keep saying, who is a Muslim? And from the first second I start my broadcast, I say, who is the Muslim who would like to call us right now? And actually we call, we, we take Muslim calls first. We favor Muslims to call us. We are not the same as the Dean show who say, oh, I just received a message. Oh, I receive a question, but nobody's asking question. Nobody's calling. We are real not like you Muslims Fake questions fake debate, you know fake argument and you speak always to people who do not know what they are talking about So who is the Muslim want to give us a call and Let us see how much you know about your religion and ours It's very funny that a Muslim want to teach you about Christianity, but he himself do not know his religion it's very funny that a Muslim he want to quote for you a verse from the Bible, but he himself cannot even quote a verse correctly from his own Quran. Why you Muslims don't have the courage? We are here. We are here. And we make a challenge every day. And this is a friendly challenge. You know, we wouldn't want to, we are not rude, we will not call names, we will not use bad language the same as Muslims they do. But allowed me to describe you as you are So who is the Muslim I don't want to start the topic by myself I prefer if a Muslim he can call us You see the 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 title here it says rape victim should marry the rapist This is very embarrassing I mean how in the world You Christians Jews Believe in a book teach such a thing the Muslims they have a complaint and they believe this is very wrong now who is the brave Muslim he wanna call me and he will say with loud voice clear that this is wrong do we have any Muslim he dare you see I'm challenging you to call me and to say to me absolutely this is wrong take a stand for what you say in YouTube I want to see the Muslims who claim to be uh, complaining about what is written in the Old Testament to take a stand right now and just to say what you say to those kids the 19 years old kids who you try to debate with them do we have any Abdul who is the brave Abdul I'm calling you I am challenging you I accuse the Muslims to be people of fabrication and lies and they only debate someone who know nothing about 
his religion and your religion. I'm not changing the topic. You see, I choose a topic you like. Rape victim should marry the rapist. Any Muslim? Our Skype is open. You do not need to use a phone number. No phone call, no cost, no money. It's for free. You have no excuse. Where is those who go in the... They call themselves the Dawa guys. How come we can, we don't get one of those Dawa guys in the corners, corner speaker giving us a call? Why we cannot find them? This is the corner, and this is a big corner. Right now, I just started five minutes ago. I have almost 100 people listening. I just started. Less than five minutes. So where is the Dawa corner people? Who is the smart, brave Muslim? He want to stand for what they say and they accuse Christianity and Judaism with. Or maybe you are people who accuse us in the corner of the street as long as you see a bunch of kids around you who know nothing. But when the real men come to you, you go mute and you disappear. Now, somebody told me, when you are going to go to the speaker corner, my friend, I live in America. We don't have a speaker corner here. However, I smash Islam in every corner in my way. If somebody told you I live in London, that's he is lying to you. I don't live in London to go to the speaker corner. And why I want to go to the speaker corner? This is a speaker corner. Here we show you the reference, we show the proof right in the front of your face. Not like in a speaker corner, somebody he caught for me, something is not even exist. The prophet he said, the prophet he said, show me. Do you know that the Jewish guy he used to piss at the prophet house? Show me. They try to fool you with Islam teach respect women. Show me. So they say things to you in the corner because there is no way to show you. You know, like I can say whatever I want and I can get away with it. Here, they cannot do that. Speaker corner is a shouting and screaming corner, and nobody prove what approve what he say. So now I want a Muslim who take a stand against the teaching of the Old Testament that raping a victim, raping a woman, and marrying that woman is wrong. Who wanna do that? Who is the brave Muslim there to call me, guys? If you if you remember the the guy, uh, what his name? The blonde idiot, the onion head. Uh, this guy, he watched some of my videos and he said to himself, Christian Prince, when he asks you a question, it means there is something behind it. So let us let us do it this way. It's very easy. Don't say to him yes, don't say no. Don't answer him, don't give him an answer, and you will be a winner. But it doesn't work with me. It doesn't work with the Christian prince. You come to me with onion head, you come to me with eggplant head, you come to me with that lizard head, it doesn't matter. I will corner you, I will show the world how stupid you are, I will show how crazy Islam is, and I will show how Muslims have no idea what they are talking about. Now, who is the brave Muslim he dare to call? Guys, share the link, please, around with your friends in Facebook and Twitter, all right? And invite everybody. We just started, and soon things will get hot, very hot. And don't think things will get hot because we will, we will warp the, the legs of the Abdul with the uh, plastic uh, food folders. No, because they get hot, hot right away. A Muslim right away, when he speak about his religion, he have one. The fact you don't even have a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a cocktail. It's like you know, it's like a dumpster, and you people they throw there whatever they have, and then 
whatever is inside this is Islam but Islam is not a religion and we can prove it very easy now we will start with a very simple question what is the punishment of rape in Islam the Muslim they say that Allah is God Allah is God and the Quran is a perfect book of God okay so what is the punishment Allah he taught you in the Quran for the rape any Muslim who is the Muslim want to show us the punishment of rape where in the Quran it says in case of rape the punishment is this and this and that yeah yesterday video I deleted because I told you from the beginning this is just to talk to you and explain things to you is not meant to be there so what is the punishment of rape according to the Quran is it true that the whole Quran did not have or include one punishment for rape any Muslim what is the punishment of rape so the God of the Quran the God of the Quran have all the time to tell us about the flying carpet and ant speaking to her friends and say hey ant hey ant ant yes hide hide please Suleiman is coming huh you better hide ant hey ant I mean this is a cartoon so Allah he have time to tell us about the ants but he don't have a time to tell us about what is the punishment of rape and this is supposedly the book of God in the Old Testament it says in one case there is many cases of rape in one case that if a young man he lay with a young woman this person he have to pay her father her dowry and he have to marry her and he cannot divorce her now what Islam provide better than that let us see any Muslim any Muslim is going to call what you Muslims have a solution for rape what is the solution for rape in Islam what is the punishment of rape I'm waiting for you Muslims I never saw a stupid logic as much as the logic of the Abdul always you know you see the Abdul he go to Europe and he spoke about the dirty Western but he cannot even clean his street in the Middle East he cannot even teach himself how where to piss people in the Middle East they piss in the middle of the road he unzip and he piss so they cannot see how dirty their street but they can see how dirty Europe is now here Muslims we do expose the laundry of Islam and this is why you don't dare to call me so who is the Muslim he dare to call don't make me start by myself I'm giving you opportunity to give us a call and show us the truth you will talk I will talk you know crossfire debate you know we don't do this stupid thing five minutes for you five minutes for, for him this is stupid because in five minutes he can go and sing for me a song and he never answered a question and this is what the Muslims do you ask a Muslim tell me about beating wives in Islam He's, he will start telling you I never beat my wife in Islam what I'm not asking you if you did beat your wife or not this is not the question so he spent five minutes telling me that me myself I never did beat my wife my wife actually she is the most lucky woman in the earth and you can ask her hey my wife are you there oh she left she left yeah yeah because I, I, I she have a, a brother why she have a black eye you know uh, because she hit uh, she hit herself she hit herself with the uh, uh, with the edge of the bed mm. 
who is the Muslim wanna tell us what is the solution according to Islam for a woman being raped and what we should do with the rapist any Muslim Anyone? Let us start with the story of rape in Islam and let us see what is the solution. Let us go. As long as the Muslims are not going to call, I mean, what we can do. All right. Oh, I cannot find this hadith here. Why? Uh, that's weird. Mm. Okay, let us see something else. Let us see. Let us see. Hmm. Well, if we cannot find it in English, then we can find it in Arabic. It doesn't matter, really. Let us try. We did not post it here. Yeah, look like this uh, website. You know, I like to use this website because it have the Arabic and the English at the same time. But not always you find what you are looking for. But I remember before I saw it in English, but not sure which website this is story. Hmm, look like it's not here. To make the story simple. We will open life in front of you what the Muslims they have in their books and actually I'm really surprised uh, that they don't have this hadith in English I'm not sure why but maybe because they are ashamed of it all right let us see All right. This is just a start, by the way. We are not even, we are just saying hello. This is your Islamic official website, islamweb.net. This is the book of Al Muhallab al Athar, volume number 12, page number 196. Read with me carefully, Abdul. عن أبي الطفيل أن امرأة أصابها الجوع فأتت راعيا فسألته الطعام فأبى عليها حتى تعطيه نفسها قالت uh, you know just to translate for you a woman she is in the desert and she is dying all right and she saw a sheep shepherd he is in the desert and she asked him for food the shepherd he said to her i will not give you food unless you take off your panty and let me do bang bang with you uh, there's no screen oh sorry for that okay here we go let us go back from zero this is the name of the book and by the way, this story can appear in many places, not only in, I'm just, uh, you know, I just searched in a second and this book came and this is official Islamic website. So the woman, 
she is suffering from hunger and she is dying in the desert and she found finally somebody in the desert who is a shepherd he have animals with him she asked she asked him for food he refused to give her food unless she sleep with him but this is not his wife right which means he raped her because you forced her she's dying what she would do this woman she went to the caliphate Omar ibn al-Khattab and she told him about what this man this filthy man he did with her Omar he said Allahu Akbar this is your dowry <laughs> so he married her Omar al-Khattab he considered this is marriage but the fact the women she is coming to him to complain that this man he raped her he forced her into sex she have no she have no solution she is in the desert she is alone she is dying from hunger and now she is asking him for food to survive what Umar al khattab he said after she told him the story he said mahar 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 and he said allahu akbar and not only that the umar he did not even punish her for sin i mean what sin she did the poor woman That is your religion. So your caliphate, he practiced forcing women to marry their, their, their rapist from the beginning of Islam. Now, this is not all. We have many because Muhammad himself was a rapist and he forced women to, to marry him after he raped them. This is just a start. Guys, don't forget to invite your friends, please. Unless the topic is not interesting for you. That is a different story. All right. If we go in the Old Testament where the Muslims are complaining, the Muslims are unhappy with this book all right they are unhappy what the problem with this book this book says that if a man let us read together you know if a man he finds a young woman who is virgin who is not a betterhood and he sized her and lie, lays with her and they found and they are found out then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman father 50 shekel of silver and he shall uh, uh, be uh, she, she shall be his wife because he had you know violated her he should not be permitted to divorce her all his days which means until he died okay so the muslim they are saying this is disgusting but look carefully first of all when the Muslim he quote for you a verse from the Bible he is a liar it doesn't matter what he say because he is the last one he can explain to us our Bible when he cannot explain him to us his own Quran how he is qualified to explain our Bible to us if you read the Bible carefully the punishment of rape is death the punishment of rape is death read just the, the, just a little bit before if a young woman who is a virgin, you know, uh, because, you know, simply the, the Jews, they have kind of marriage where you are married, but you are engaged, which means engagement for the Jews, it was kind of marriage. This is why Mary herself, she was married, but she is considered as engaged because engagement is simply marriage without moving to the house of the husband or having any sexual life with him. So if this woman, she found with a man or she like they discovered their 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 secret let us say she is having adultery with the man he she is having fornication with and she is married this woman she is going to be put to death both of them so this is the punishment and this is where muhammad himself he stole his law if we go in the quran and we find where is the stoning to death 
order we cannot find it is he something stored from the Jews this is where Muhammad he got all his Islamic law from that law from the law of Moses and yet the Muslims are complaining let us continue but if a man find a young woman okay in the countryside and force her with and, and lies with her then only the man who lay with her should die so the punishment is death for rape because now he took her against her will all right who is the one going to die only the man he will be punished by death why because she is not part of this crime he forced her in verse number 23 if the woman she is engaged which means married and she is associating with this kind of act which means she is a cheating then both of them they will be stoned to death in verse number 25 it says that if a man and an engaged woman which is again it's mean it's married but you know still she is not living with the husband the man the man who did force her into sex he is the one should die and in verse number 26 says it clearly don't punish the girl for she commit no sin she is innocent now it says here there's a condition that this woman she have to be in a place where no there's no people there and nobody and she scream but nobody we are there to help that is a proof that she is against the rape otherwise this is not rape so if you are in a city and you did not scream asking for help that's mean you like it and you want it and now you claim it was a rape to save yourself in verse number 28 it says the following that's a man if he found a woman she is a virgin which means she is not engaged and he sides her and lay with her and they are found out look here at they are found out they are found out that's mean she did not even tell it was somebody else found about them why she did not tell that this guy he raped me they found out then the man who lay with her shall give the young woman father 50 shekel of silver and shall be she shall be his wife because they have you know he, he you know he he stepped with her and he shall not be permitted for divorce now we are talking about a law is exist 3000 years before our time when people they have nothing 3000 years at least we are talking and as you see it's going in details for every case this is a woman she is not married she have no husband and now someone he stepped with her and obviously we cannot say really he is he sized her but obviously she is not too much against it to the point she did not even report the guy that he did rape her they found out about them in this case even if he forced her but she did not report even he is the one let us say she is dating him and he start kissing her blah 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 he hold her hand he forced her into sex but she is meeting him with him and she is there for a reason she is single he is single they are meeting together otherwise why the women she did not scream and she did not report what the man did to her they were they found about them that man and this woman because they are singles because they are singles notice here carefully if a young man if a man he found a young woman and this woman she is a virgin which means she is single she is not married to any man then the solution for this because they are together hmm, for doing something is not lawful 
having sex out of marriage maybe this guy trying to fool this girl he want to sleep with her as many men do men they sleep with the women you know they say to her all the nice words until she take off her panty and after she they sleep with her ah get lost i do not know you the man he disappeared from her life he don't want to talk to her he don't want to see her so you cannot be a scammer under the law of Moses. And there is additional reason for that. A woman who lose her virginity in the time of Moses, she have a big problem. No man will marry her. No man will marry her. Until now, actually, in the Middle East, if a woman, she is not virgin, and she don't she cannot explain why she is not virgin which means like if she is not a widow or divorced nobody will marry her this is why number one people who do virgin again surgery in the Middle East is women I mean in the world actually is women from the Middle East so this woman she will not find a husband ever so what the solution and obviously she is already seeing this man. This is not really a total rape if we say maybe he forced her to sleep with him But obviously they are together in the crime Why because she never reported this guy that he did sleep with her. She never shout and scream. He say this guy he raped me They found out about them Then because both of them obviously they are dating together they are maybe she don't like to sleep with him right now maybe she's trying to make him to convince him to marry her hmm? so he let us meet uh, under the bushes some you know behind the trees and you know i want to talk to you i want to say to you some nice words she go there and you know he forced her into sex but obviously she was part of this uh, thing which happened and because this woman nobody will marry her so now this man he will be forced to marry her and he will never be able to divorce her which means you cannot play the game i will marry her for now and tomorrow i will divorce her just to save myself from the punishment of death because the punishment of rape if it is rape is death now we explain what the bible is speaking about and this is a law exists three thousand years before do you believe that the Muslim who complain about this they practice this law until now? Just last week we saw the news That those laws are going to drop one by one in the Middle East. They are practicing them for the last 1400 years Read carefully with me New York New York Times This is July 22, but actually there's there's a newer news. I can search for it and we can filter to show you in 2018 so what is the law in the Middle East all Islamic countries they practice that the rapist have to marry the one he you know he raped but this is different from the from the one is in the in the Bible the one in the Bible that this woman she is meeting with this guy she is dating this guy and he forced her into sex this is about a real rape where you go and grab someone in the street you force her into sex. She do not. You do not know her. Just a woman. You like her, and then because of that, you have to marry her. And this is your countries, and this is your Islamic law. So how come the Muslims are complaining about a law they themselves they practice? Any Abdul can explain to us? Is that because you Muslims are hypocrites? Or because you are a stupid ignorant, you do not know what your own law is teaching you? I think it's both. Because you are ignorant and you are a stupid and you do not know what Islam teach. Otherwise, I want the Muslim to explain to me why in your country you practice what is written Actually, it's not what's written in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say if you rape a woman, you marry her. This is not what the Bible says, and we explain the verse in details. It is you, Muslims, who the one who practice that. So why you are a hypocrite liar?
can't we ever find a Muslim he is not lying I mean why what is the problem if we type in the top 2018 hold on so we can get the news of 2018 all right all right i don't know where it, uh, the uh, for some reason in this page there is no filtering for the date where is the filter i'm trying to find the filter maybe i need to click at tools or setting i don't know history tools okay here we go let us see uh this month uh, just month this month all right will iraq be the next to abolish the controversial marry your rabies law this is a law is exist as we speak in iraq what about jordan this is a law they practice in Jordan forever. What about Morocco? This is the law they practice in Morocco forever. What about Tunisia? This is the law they practice in, in Tunisia forever. What about Turkey? This is the law they practice in Turkey forever. So why you stupid idiot you complain about a law you yourself a practice, which means if a guy he rape your daughter in your own country, you are going to be forced to marry your daughter for this man. This is in your country and this is in your law. Huh? And by the way, nobody rape in the world as much as Muslims. So why Muslims are hypocrites? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Do we have any Muslim? Because we like to hear your voice. In Pakistan, there's a guy he raped a woman. Do you know what the Pakistani Muslim they did? They brought his sister and the whole village raped his sister in return. That is Islamic countries and this is the justice of Muslims. What do you say Muslims now let us see Muhammad himself the rapist I mean why in the world a Muslim would not rape and force the women to marry him after rape if Muhammad himself is the first rapist who forced the women to after he raped her to be his wife are you going to say to me Muhammad was a bad Muslim was Muhammad a bad Muslim Any Abdul? If we write here, let us see what country by country, Morocco. Twelve hours ago. How how long? How long? Guys, do you see? Twelve hours ago. A marry your it's a rapist law marry the rapist law or rape marriage this is an update about the law in Morocco about marrying your rapist what is that what is that read with me here carefully Iraq is it, ha is, it has to keep up with the surrounding neighborhood or neighbors like Tunisia and Lebanon and other countries that abolish this law which means they have it until now egypt re repealed this law its law in 1999 morocco overheld the law 
in 2014 following the suicide of 16 years old girl so here this is a long article you can read it but this is what they do they practice the slow base based on Islam ask yourself Muslim in Islamic countries when they make Allah is made by what based on what based on Islam as we showed you Omar al-Khattab he himself he forced a woman who was raped to be a wife for a man who raped her Tunisia Iraq Algeria Morocco you, you name it now let us go to the biggest rapist Muhammad read with me my my friend if we ask any Muslim if we ask any Muslim right now <coughs> Who is this woman? Her name is Sophia. Any Muslim can give me the answer in the in the in the chat, or you can call me. Who is Sophia? This woman, Sophia. Who is who is she? Any Muslim? <clears throat> is she, according to you, Muslims, is one of the wives of Muhammad? Muslims is that a true that Sophia is one of the wives of Muhammad but how she became a wife he raped her in the same day he killed her husband and she was a bride she was what she was a bride I read carefully this is not my translation I'm not the one reporting the story this is one of your best Muslims his name is Anna subnomadic reporting what he witnessed we came to Khaybar and we bestrid the conquest the, the, the conquest of the four trees on us the beauty of Safiya the beauty of Safiya the daughter of Hoyei was mentioned to him who the prophet that she is very beautiful her husband was killed killed by who in by muhammad in the same day in the same hour actually actually muhammad he made her you know uh, uh, Kalbi. he made her walk over the dead bodies of her family stepping over them she was a bride do you see it muslims she was what she was a bride not a bride to Muhammad she was a bride to a man she just get married maybe a night before maybe the day the Apostle of Allah choose her for himself you see the Muslims are complaining about forcing the one you rape to marry this guy he should be killed he killed her family he killed her husband and don't tell me the women I mean look if a Muslim he will tell me that this woman she she chose Muhammad to marry her I mean look at this story in front of you Muhammad before he arrived to hometown he raped her they just leave the town they did not even leave the hills look read with me carefully he came out with her we reach Sad al Shaba where she was purified and he slept with her do you see it the woman she did not even arrive to his house yet in the way in the way he killed her family he killed her tribe he killed her husband he killed everybody her father her brother and he raped her in the same day and supposedly this is her his wife so if you are against rapists to marry their wives are you Muslim stupid or what don't you see that your prophet is the one who raped women and not only rape women he killed her family this guy he should be put to death based on the Bible this man should be put to death anyone remember why guys anyone remember why what the Bible in the Old Testament said if a man he rape a woman she is married against her will he should be put to death and there's no way a woman you killed her family a few hours ago she is going to sleep with any man in the world 
He killed her husband. He killed her father. He killed her brother. He killed all her tribe. And then you want to tell me that she slept with him and he took her as a slave. She remember she's a slave. She's not free to go. They took her as a as a booty. Actually, the one who took her first it was the uh, Hill uh, Kalbi. When Muhammad he heard that this woman she is pretty, Muhammad he called for Dahia. He said, "Give me this girl, and go and take other girls. You know, instead, like take four girls, as if they are potatoes." Do you see it? So the hypocrisy of the Muslims is amazing, and the stupidity of the Abdul is beyond imagination. You remember what Jesus said about those who see the little tiny wood in your eye, but they don't see the big tree in their in their eye. This is exactly how the Muslims are. The Muslim he have a big tree not only in his eye, in his ass. Excuse my language, but he don't see it, he don't feel it. Yet he is accusing a book written three thousand years ago to be disgusting. That is the truth. That is the truth where you Muslims, you don't dare even. This is why you don't dare to call me, you coward. You want to debate someone is 19 years old, you do not know even how to read two words in the Bible? What about you call me now? In different hadith, it says that Muhammad, when he raped this woman, he have a guard guarding him outside his tent. Is that true, Muslims? You see all those stories about this woman. Read with me carefully, Abdul. Read with me carefully. And by the way, by the way, uh, the Muslim, they were like, you know, they, like when, when he raped this woman, they start giving him food because Muhammad, he need to some energy, you know, for the bang bang, you know. That is your religion. Who is a Muslim? He dared to tell us that your prophet is not himself the first rapist and the first one who forced women to sleep with him in the same day. Hmm? Any Abdul? Who is Abdul when I call us? This is a long story here. Who is a Muslim when I call me so I can show you how the Muslims they are guarding Muhammad during the time he was raping this poor woman who Muhammad killed her husband. Any Muslim? Who is a, a, you know, I hope I'm not insulting Muslim when I say any brave Muslim. I don't mean it seriously. I don't mean it. I, when I say a smart Muslim, brave Muslim, uh, honest Muslim, trust me, I don't mean it. Because I never met smart, honest, brave. You see, even those who commit suicide by me, they are not brave, they are coward. He pushed the bomb, he don't feel anything, he's dead, you know. And they tell him right away, your penis will be in this, and virgin will be waiting for you, and their legs is open. And by the way, my book about sex and Allah, this is the name is going to be for the book, is going to be out soon in Amazon. So just wait for it.
Yeah, this is the truth. You know, those those Muslims, they are not doing jihad for the sake of Allah. They are doing jihad for the sake of vagina. Every one of them dreaming about 80,000 women naked and their legs is wide open. And each time he finish having sex with them, Allah, he will put his finger between her legs and he will make her virgin again. I mean, even, even virginity in the heaven of Allah is a cheating. What the point of making her virgin again if she is not virgin? I just escaped with her. Hmm? And isn't it this is a rape? even in heaven of Allah? It's a rape because this woman do she have a choice not to sleep with the husband, even though you call him husband, which is funny. I mean, husband have eighty thousand women in his bed. What kind of husband this husband is? Women they are created according to the Quran. Those women are created for sex. That's mean they don't have a choice. Did they choose to go to heaven and to be a sex toy for this guy? No. Hmm? Read with me carefully. The book of the Abdul. All right. Hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam. What the heck is that? What what do you mean hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam? Can you explain to us Allah? I forget Allah. He don't know what he's talking about. Muhammad is Allah. In chapter 55, verse number 72, it says that in the heaven, Allah will have women who they are jailed. But the Muslim, they say, it's a nice jail, my friend. It's, an, it's a palace. Yes, they are jailed inside. They can't get out. Hello. But it's a nice. It's a beautiful. She have anything she want. It's a jail, Abdul. What's Rod talking about? What if I put you inside the five stars hotel jail and you don't leave for eternity? Those companions who they are females, they are, you know, re restrained. Restrained? Yeah, they are captured inside. And not only that, Allah, he promised us that those women, not only they are restrained, no man and no genie did f them hold on hold on some muslims they might say it doesn't say that you are a liar who is a muslim want to say that to me because i enjoy it when a muslim he says that to me who is a muslim want to challenge me to prove to him that this verse it says that those women no genie and no man did f them Anyone? Anyone? Any smart Muslim? I hope I'm not offending the Muslim when I say smart Muslim. They get offended for any reason. You say smart Muslim, they get offended. You call them Abdul. They call themselves Abdul 24 hours, seven days a week. The second I call them Abdul, they get offended. Hmm? Okay, look like no Muslim will call. I understand. I don't blame you. I mean, you are learning your lesson, you know. Let us see. Yeah, they are getting smarter. Read with me, Abdul. Mm. I forgot you Muslim do not know how to read. Uh -huh. All right. Translation. Oh, let us go to the verse after. Hold on. I don't want to see this verse. I want to see the verse after it. Verse number 73 or 74. Look at the false Muslim translation for this verse. The first one, and he flowered her. It says in the Quran he did and he flowered her. And he flowered? Are you sure? Abdul, the one who made this translation, are you sure that this is what the Quran is saying? 
I don't know, Abdul. I think there is something fishy about this translation. He any flower her? Ah, flowering issue here. The second one, whom no human had touched her before. Oh, she is touch free. What does that touch her mean? Like touch her finger, touch her nose. What do you mean touch her? Are you sure? Aha, uh -huh. let us see more. And touched by any man or genie. Like, what the heck? I thought every human being, when he is born, the genie touched him in his belly, except Jesus. Arbari, and touched before them by any man or jinn. And I don't know what those two dots next. I have no idea what does that mean. Let it go, let it go. Corbos, what Corbos? Not has touched by any man before them, not any jinn. Like, what the heck? It doesn't say that in Arabic. We are getting closer. Hold on. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing religion. Amazing, my brother. There has deflowered them neither man, man, what kind of translation? Man or genie. Are you sure? Ah, let us see now. There is somebody. His name is Halili and Khan. These are two guys translating. They are Muslims from Pakistan. They translated the verse. They gave it the most accurate translation. Read with me carefully. Oh boy. Do you see what the Quran is saying? Huh? I will make it nicer. Has opened no man nor genie. No man nor genie has opened their vagina with sexual intercourse i'm so glad they put the word sexual intercourse because i thought they will open it with a spoon or a fork i mean isn't it obvious that it is sexual intercourse so we have a god he promised me that he will give me a lot of vagina and be happy those vagina nobody opened them and nobody opened the humans by his nose or by his penis he opened nothing they are brand new do you see it this is the quran so god is telling me that the women vagina he is telling me he's giving us he, allah he is giving us a report about the situation of the vagina my friend I am Allah. Hold on, hold on. This is need some back background in music. Are you ready, kids? Allah. All right, let us go for it. I am the God of Islam. I will promise you in the heaven. Shish kebab, falafel, hummus. But remember, all of it is going to be made from bird meat. I will make you sit in couches, for sure made in China. In the top of that, I will give you a pillow. You deserve it, my friend. You've been obedient to me. A pillow, yes. I know you cannot believe it. I know it's hard to believe. I know it is impossible. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get the pillow. And not only I will give you a pillow, I will give you something to put in the top of the pillow. Do you know what is that? A vagina. A woman who her vagina never been touched. Oh, sorry, I don't mean it this way. Never been beep effed by not a human or even a genie. Because I put them for you in a security deposit box where nobody can get in or get out. That's astonishing.
I mean, I am really, I'm convinced that this is God is talking. He is giving me a big report about the vagina of my future women. I mean, I was really concerned if maybe somebody touched their vagina before me. You don't want to have that. Imagine you go all the way to heaven, you take off your panty and you want to jump in the bed and suddenly like, what? She said to you, I stepped with the guy before you. Who is he? What's his name? Give me his name. Where you met him in a dating website. That's scary. You know, you know this is not happening no more. I stepped with Naman Khan. With who? Naman Khan. You know, he was sending me text messages in WhatsApp. What the heck? This is a beautiful religion. Does God he think about everything in details? He want to be sure that you will not receive a vagina which has been touched or used or have even one mileage in it. Zero mileage guaranteed. The wax is still there. This is God. I mean, still you are asking me that there's Muhammad is not a prophet and Allah is not God. Look at the proof in the front of you. And Muslims, what we will do with those women when we go to heaven who their vagina never been opened before? Ah, we will rape them. A uh, Muslim, he will say to you, those are their wives. No, this is not their wives. Those women, they did not choose you. They never met you. How a woman, she is forced to sleep with me and she became my wife, but yet she never met me. She did not know my name. She didn't know how ugly I am. This is rape. Did this woman, did Allah ask this woman, do you like to marry this guy? No, he created them just for sex. It's a sex toy. It's his Allah is the first teacher and the first one who practiced rape. This is a rape. If you remember. The other story, which maybe we did not mention yet, maybe we should mention. Should we mention or we should not? I'm really disappointed that Muslims are not calling. Why Muslims are not calling? Why you Muslims? Aren't you proud? Guys, where is everybody? Why we have only, we did not even reach the 200. If a girl, she is showing her skirt in a screen, we will have 10,000. There's a girl she do unboxing with her bikini. She get a million hit. Should I do uh, unboxing like Muhammad and bring the version with me, or like Harun Yahya? Do you know anyone remember Harun Yahya? Who remember Harun Yahya? The one who I made a book to to refute him about the the founder of the miracles, the science of the Quran. Anyone remember him? If you go watch his videos in YouTube, this guy, you know. He bring a bunch of a blonde girls. All of them they are blonde, blonde, and they have like fake surgery, like big balloon, big boom, point, 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 point. You know, big balloon, and they are wearing very, very conservative clothes. I mean, almost the nipples is coming out. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. And this is the guy who started the revolutionary discovery that the Quran teach science and the Quran have science, and he do that live in TV. This is not like a, a tape, like uh, somebody found about him no no he do it live in tv twice a week in turkey and not only that they dance for him you know those girls they dance for him shake it shake it i mean not like me the poor me i don't even have somebody to make some tea for me i sit here for three four hours seven hours sometime you know and i want to go and get like a grab some water i cannot this muslim guy who was doing dawah he have all those blonde girls man I want to go to heaven again, man. I was there, by the way. I wasn't there. I was there, you know. <sighs> I was there, you know. I, if I tell you my story, you will not believe it. Only a Muslim can believe such a story. Let me tell you what happened. Once I was asleep in my room. Not this room, the other room. Not not the other room, the, you know, the different room in Mecca. And then I heard something knocking at the door. Not this door, the other door. And then I look from the window and I saw a knee of a mule, just a knee, because the mule was so huge, very big. 
I went outside. He looked like a mule, but it was a female. Her name is Al Buraq. She was wearing bracelet and necklace, and she have a body care and manicure in her nails. Yeah, she have nails. <laughs> Beautiful. Very sexy. Then I ride on her. This 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 female donkey. She will not allow anyone to ride except someone like me. You know. By the way, my name is Muhammad. And when I ride on her, she took me from the first heaven to the second heaven, the third heaven. And by the way, I don't want to mention to you what I saw in my way. We stopped in Las Vegas. We ate a steak. We did gambling. We saw blonde girls. A lot of things even I cannot say. What happened to my microphone? <clears throat> did I lose voice? No, I think it's fine. No? Guys, tell me if uh, if the sound is not coming good. So when I was in heaven or in my way to heaven, I did a lot of things. I'm not ashamed to tell you, but I am shy to tell you. I'm not ashamed. I am shy. All right. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I should tell you. I maybe should not because some of you may be under the age. Who of you here is not mature? He is not in the age of my wife, Aisha, at the age of six. Please, if you did not reach the age of six yet, you better leave because the topic is only for mature people from the age of six and above. And now, as long as we remember Aisha, let me ask you, Muslims, when Muhammad, he slept with Aisha at the age of nine, according to you, was that rape of a child? Do even Aisha know what sex means? Hmm? Do Aisha know what sex mean? I wonder what happened to Aisha first time she saw the willy of Muhammad. Maybe she was saying, oh, snake, 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 snake. Muhammad, he said, cool down, cool down. This is not a snake, okay? This is a surgeries, okay? This is not a snake. What happened to a child at the age of nine? Seeing, according to Muslim, it was nine, but the fact he married her at the age of six, remember? What happened to this poor girl when Muhammad was taking off his, his panty in front of her? Any Muslim can explain to us? So you are against rape, right? You are against rape. Yeah, some she say they say that Aisha she was 18 when she married Muhammad. Muhammad was dead when Aisha she was 18. I mean, it, it, the Muslim even do not know how to make a lie come to be like uh, acceptable. He was dead at the age of 18 when she was going in the 17. Muhammad died. Even I saw an article saying that Aisha she was 21. Man, she did marry Muhammad. Three years after his death. That's possible in Islam. Everything is possible. You know? Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim would give us a call? I'm so glad and excited that I'm going to convert to Islam and your God is going to give me a woman. Their private part is brand new. Shiny. By the way, don't forget that at the end of the day, nobody can be the private part of the prophet. Muhammad, he said to Aisha, don't look at my private part, otherwise you will go blind. I'm not sure what is this is for. If you look at the private part of the prophet, you will, you will go blind. Are you sure? So how Muhammad was doing it? I mean, I don't know. Do we have any brave Muslim here in the bushes? We did not start yet, by the way. We are just saying hello. We are just saying hello. Any Muslim would like to call? Anyone? Our, our Skype is on. You can call me right now. And feel free to talk to me as you wish by the way I noticed that I am not self-confident 
This is why always I like to debate about the Trinity. I mean, have you ever seen a Muslim he don't want to debate about two things? How Jesus do not know that that means they? And how the Trinity? Hmm? That's it. This is what the, you know. That's the only two topics they want to talk about. Huh? So who want to call me to talk about the Trinity? No problem. Call me about the Trinity. Or call me to talk me about Jesus do not know the judgment day. Anything, anything you wish. What do you want? Any Muslim? We are just trying to encourage you. And remember, by the way, if you call us, Allah will give you a lot of deeds. You see, in Islam, uh, Allah give deeds to Muslims like left and right, man. I mean, the deeds come like from every direction. If you kill a lizard from the first shot, Allah give you a lot of deeds. You know, we are going to uh, the Sahara Desert in Arizona to hunt for lizards so we can get a lot of deeds. Who want to join us? Hmm? Anyone? No, that's very embarrassing. Uh, let me be sure that uh, Skype is open. Let me see. Is the Skype open? Yeah, it's open. So, what is the Muslims? I mean, this is not, not really right. Why? What's happening here? You Muslim don't want to refute me. Hmm. Who is a Muslim would like to call us? You are working in it. Should I pay you back? Okay, let us do this. Anyone who bring me a Muslim to debate me, I'm going to call Allah for you to grant you extra unused versions. I mean, why you need to see unused? They are a version already. Hey, by the way, Abdul, I just I have a question. Just a question came to my mind. I'm not sure if this is not if this is appropriate to say or not. Prop, prop, proper yet? I don't know what I, I, English. My English is funny. Here it says that nobody opened their vagina. Okay, what about their mouth? You know, like, you know, people, they do many kinds of sex these days. So what do you mean they never opened their vagina? What about the rest? What about their back door, their mouth? Only the vagina never been opened? That is the only place? Do we have any Muslim want to help us with this situation? Because Allah here promising us that those women, they never have intercourse in their vagina. What about the rest locations? Anyone? Hello? I don't know. I think Allah, he need to add more verses to the Quran. He should say, nobody touched their vagina and no, no, nobody, nobody made his private part inside her vagina and nobody put his private part inside their mouth and nobody put his private part inside their beep in the back door. Because what is the benefit of this woman? She did not have sex in her vagina, but she has sex all over. You know what I'm saying, Muslims? Is it possible that this version is not a version because she has sex with different location? So if she is not, she never used her vagina, do that make her a decent woman? What do you think? Anyone? 
Yeah, but because women, they can do all kind of filthy things. And, you know, who care about being virgin? She can still virgin too. She can stay virgin. And actually, this is how most of Muslim women, they do, you know, before marriage. Many of them, they stay married, they stay virgin, but they are doing all kind of uh, shish kebab, hummus stuff. Hmm? Who is the Muslim? He is going to give us a call. I feel sometimes like I am a homeless begging for like begging for a Muslim. Can any Muslim here? Do we have any Muslim? I think I should even record a voice message message in my program and the voice message in the background says any Muslim 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 Muslim. I don't know if you watch ever a Muslim uh, videos, especially when they talk about Allah, you know. So when the Muslim they speak about Allah, the sound come like this. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, Rahim, Rahim, Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Shaitan al-Nim, Nim, Nim, Nim. Brothers and sisters, sisters, sisters. Today our topic, topic, topic is not about falafel, 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 falafel. It's about something very serious, 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 serious. It's about drinking camel urine. The Prophet, peace upon him, 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 him. He said, 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 if you drink camel urine, urine, you would love it, love it, love it. You would go crazy for it, for it, for it. You will never believe how beautiful it is, it is, it is, it is. Brothers and sisters, 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 sisters. This is Islam, the religion of echo, echo. I mean, I never saw anyone love those echo programs as much as Muslims. It looked like, you know, when they put it in the background, they make it like something holy, like Allah, Allah, Allah. Like what the heck, 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 heck. This is amazing, 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 amazing. Oh boy. Any Abdul? Any Abdul? Hmm? Oh, ho hold on. I think I found why Abdul are not calling. Any Abdul? Lul, 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 lul. I think that will work. Let us see. Let us give it some time. Let us repeat again. Any Abdul? Abdul, Abdul. I think that more attractive. What do you think? Anyone in the bushes? No? I mean, why I'm not lucky? Hmm? <clears throat> Come on, Muslims. Who is a Muslim is going to give us a call? What do you say? Do you feel like calling me, saying something very strong? So what we found is that the Muslim complain about what they call the rapist marrying the victim in the Bible is a hocus, it's a lie. It's not what really it says. It is they who practice. Their prophet is the first rapist who forced the women he raped to be his wife, to be his sex slave first and to be his wife. And he raped her in the same day he killed her family, her brother, her father, and her husband. So why Muslims are a bunch of hypocrites? Any Muslim would like to call us. Anyone? No? 
Look like today we are not lucky, but I promise you, my friend, that the Muslims they are going to call as soon as they can get their force together. By the way, Muslims, generally speaking, they are very knowledgeable, as long as you don't ask them questions. All of them they knew. Like, as an example, you will never find a Muslim who don't say to you, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa. And that's it. After that, he had no idea. Like don't go don't don't count to ten, count to nine, seven, you know. Like Bismillah Alhamdulillah Wala Hawla Wala Kuwata Billah Allah 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 may Allah 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 inshaAllah Alhamdulillah. Okay, and okay, what after all this what? What is next? Can you please answer a question we will give you? Hmm? What is next? This is all what you know. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Hawa Hala. You know, we ask the scholar. Okay, hold on. Let me show you. I will ask a scholar. Hold on. Do you want to see an example of asking a scholar in Islam? Hold on. Let us do this. I'm going to ask the Muslim scholars why the Messiah, his name is Al Messiah. Hold on, I will search in English first. I let us see. I'm just looking for a scholar, okay? Okay, here we go. I found a scholar. Let us see here. Does the Muslims have the right to follow? Uh, this is a different question. We don't want that. We want to ask them why his name is Al Masih. Let us hope we will find an answer. Okay. I don't know, I cannot find it, but I show it to you not long ago. They say that the Messiah, maybe some they say that he is his name is Al Messiah because he have a flat feet. <laughs> you have a flat feet? Are you sure? He have a flat feet? All right. Read with me, read with me. What does Al-Masih mean? A Muslim, Abdul, is going to explain to us. Or thine. What well, described as Isa Al-Masih in Arabic, in the Masih. Okay. And where it says... Here they are reading from Al-Azhar Sheikh, who was enlightened, the graduate, etc., about Sunni Muslim seminar, blah, 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 okay. First opinion, it might mean a flat-feated, so the Messiah, his name is a flat-feated man. Guys, are you happy? Your Messiah, he have a flat feet. I cannot believe it. I'm so disappointed. The Messiah, his name is the Messiah because he have a flat feet. Second opinion. It might, it might mean the one who toured the earth in what? In sojourned what? Because the the G Jesus trouble a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's so beautiful.
the Messiah, he was called the Messiah because he was doing a program with National Geographic and going around the earth. Is that really what happened? I mean, come on, if you want to know anything, ask the Muslim scholars. So now we got two opinions. The first opinion is why the Messiah, his name is the Messiah, because he have a flat feet. And now that explain why the Messiah did not run. Like we did not see him in the Bible speak about him running in marathon or anything. Because he have a flat feet, he cannot run. He cannot even be accepted in the army. Now this is why Jesus did not join the army based on the Islamic. <laughs> Very beautiful. And the second opinion he was called al Masih because he was like uh, uh, measuring the earth. He's going around it like he's like a Mag Magellan, you know, Magellan, you know, like he's like, hey, Messiah, where are you now? I am right now in China. And yesterday I was in India, in Bombay. Let us see if this is the answer coming from Zakir Naik. The brother Zakir Naik. Uh, why the Messiah, his name was called al Masih? Brother Titter. The gentleman there that can question why the prophet Ether beat upon him, he was called Al Mathih. First of all, he was called Al Mathih for many reasons. I'm not going to tell you all the reasons because it's out of hand to count to continue counting them. So let us count the most important one. The fourth important reason for Al Mathih to be called Al Mathih simply because he have a flat feet. And actually, all the prophet of God. They have a flat feet. If you go to the Kaaba, you will find the fingerprint of a prophet Adam. If you look at the fingerprint of flat Adam feet, you will see you will notice right away it is the flat feet. So it's not a strength that the prophet Adam have a flat feet and the prophet Jesus have a flat feet and even prophet Muhammad he have a flat feet but his feet is bigger because he was bigger. Second opinion, some color they say that Jesus. He was called Al Masih because he used to fly a lot. He don't use like Delta Airline or you know Chinese airline brother. He used uh, like he walk. So he he earned the name for he is doing Masih. He is going like all over. The third opinion, huh? the third opinion. He was called Al Masih because he whip. He what? To whip? He whip? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Since the word Messiah might be delivered from the verb Messiah, <laughs> which means to whip, uh, it might mean he whipped pain from the face of the earth when he lived among the people i mean this is knowledge this is knowledge here we go we are getting deep now we are going like philosophy and okay we might not know allahu alam so the answer at the end nobody knows allah allah, allah, allah knows <laughs> i'm convinced so abdul what is the final name for al masih after all this uh, article, what is the real name? Any Muslim can tell us? Allah knows best. So this is the final answer. So all this article was garbage by garbage. Any Muslim you said no, nothing to us. If you remember, <clears throat> uh, The Quran is speak about let me see first somebody send me a text or something I don't know what is that guys don't send me don't send me a text unless it's important don't tell me uh, I love your podcast I don't please I'm busy here don't you see I'm cooking you can say that in the text not in Skype uh, all right
let us see something here showing us you know I'm trying just to show you the amazing Islamic knowledge you know Muslims they know everything the Muslim can give you any answer you are dreaming for don't ever look for answers in the Bible or no 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 Islam has all answers this, this is what they say to us so I'm going to show you some examples <sighs> Let us see. Not even one Muslim here. I'm not sure why. I'm not getting lucky lately. I think it's not a good time now to buy the lotto. All right. Let us go. To this website hold on where is the seer if you are a Muslim and you would like to call me call me anytime don't worry be happy we always take your call customers come first here if we go to chapter 68 Verse number one. Verse what? Number one. Okay. In chapter 68, verse number one, it says the following. Should I read it without background music? What do you think, guys? I think there's no need for background music because background music might make you not to see the beauty of the of, of the of the explanation of the Quran. So Allah He started the chapter here with letter noon. Noon. Now noon is not really a letter. Noon is a name used uh, for a, a whale. There's a whale. His name is Noon. By the way, me myself, I saw Noon. I saw this whale, I did ride him. I used to go like me and my family, like we are a small family. We are like just uh, almost uh, a million uh, uh, member in the, in the family. So we used to ride the whale and he take us like in the seven seas and we eat seven hummus and you know, we stop in seven restaurants and then in our way we eat uh, uh, seven, you know, salad. It's a very nice trip, you know, maybe one day I can take you with me. So the Quran here is speaking about a whale, supposedly, but now the Muslim trying to explain who is noon. So read carefully with me, and you will be amazed of the knowledge of the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, who is Muhammad named him, the only one he named him as a scholar is him. So this guy is the one certified by the Prophet Muhammad himself and by Allah. Because remember, if the Prophet certify you, that means you are certified by Allah. And from his narration in the authority of it, do you see the word authority? I did not say that. It says there the authority. This guy, he have what? Authority. Okay. In the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon. Allah who? Who is the one who says noon? Allah. He says, Allah swear by the noon. Obviously, it's clear. I mean, what's wrong? See the see the interpretation. That's it. Allah swear by noon. Okay. Now, what is left is to know who is known. So Allah swear by noon. So now, half of the problem is gone. Right in a second, from the first second, we know that Allah swear by noon. So what Allah meant by noon? Let us see. All right. Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, okay, there is later. Just let me finish this one and we can talk about the rape. <sighs> so now the interpretation is coming. We are not over yet. This is the start, which is the wheel that carry the earth on its back.
I mean, it's clear. You were wondering what noon mean? Here we go. Allah swear by noon. Who is noon? Mr. Noon is a whale. What he do for a living? He carry the earth in his back. <laughs> I feel like I want to cry, man. Sometimes I feel like I want to do salsa. Okay, Noon, shut up. Now it's not time for salsa. I mean, this is too much. Do you think really now it's time for salsa? This is serious. This is God talking. This is the, the do you want this Mr. Noon to get upset from you now and he shake the earth and we will have an earthquake? Listen carefully, please. The wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad and his followers and Allah. So this noon, he carried the earth, this whale, he carries the earth on its back. I'm so glad he did not carry it in his belly, man, or his shoulder, man, or his finger, man. Or his nose man while he is in the water like what I was afraid that the whale is carrying us when he is not in the water kids did you notice where the whale he carry us he is in the water do you understand Actually, this is make a lot of sense because water and whale always they go together. Do you understand? <laughs> now the proof that this story is true if the interpretation says that the whale was walking down street That will be a lie because whale always in the water. Do you understand? <laughs> but because the prophet and his followers they tell the truth that makes sense the whale was in the water Why he is carrying the earth? Do you understand? <laughs> I will cut my 20 foot beard if you understand anything of what I say. Do you understand? <laughs> That's it. I got it. We continue. So the whale is carrying in its back huh, the earth. And that's very common, by the way, in the Middle East. Always we have like whale carrying something. And beneath which is the ball? What? 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 Who? Uh, let me let me clean my eyes again. Ho hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think something wrong in the in the in the text. Hold on. Who is carrying the wheel? I, I what? Who? That's who are you? Can you please introduce yourself? What the heck? And what's your name? Is that the only word you know? Come on, tell us something. You so you are the one who carry the wheel in the top of him. I mean, how kind of you. Imagine if the whale is in the water, but there's no ball underneath. Should we give you some grass in return? Does that mean yes or no? I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, obviously you did read too much Quran. This is why you repeat the same thing like over oh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Can you say something to us? Like this is the only thing you know. Okay, okay, get lost. Okay, thank you. Nice meeting you. The interview is over. Look like you have nothing to say except mm, okay. So now we discover that Islam have a solution to find why and how. Why what? Why we are moving from time to time because the wheel is where in the water. You know water. You know water, right? Have you been in a, in the boat before? You know you will get seasick. Why? Because the water is moving. Hello. And that explains why there's earthquake from time to time. And additional to that, the earthquake can happen even stronger. Why? Because we are carried not only in the water, but in the top of a bowl. Mm. That's astonishing. By the way, this is scientific discovery. It's found by Allah before mankind discover where the earth is located and how earthquake happen, etc.
so take a note you grow up in a boat are you serious I don't know I think that would be fun I like I like you know I like fishing so if I grow in I grow up in the top of a whale to be honest with you because I'm an Arab I'm just being honest with you as you see the Quran support my statement I was in my house in my dad house when I was a kid but the house was where in the top of the whale and where is the whale in the top of the water and where was the water and the whale in the top of the bowl so to make it simple for you I grow up in the top of the bowl thank you let us continue and under the bowl of the story is not over yet look like things is getting more complicated and under the bowl there is a rock if 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 what under the bowl there is a rock are you sure that this is not a goat <laughs> why what <laughs> That's too much. I thought only goat and sheep they like to climb rocks. Now we discover something new. Even bull like to climb rocks. And you would not know that before. That is totally new discovery. Any Abdul? Should we continue Muslims or this is very embarrassing? This is your Islamic scholars? Huh? This is your Islamic scholars. Are you sure? We continue the story. The story is getting more excited actually exciting and at the rock is the dust i mean i was so worried that under the dust under the rock there's nothing or i was worried actually more if we find out that under the rock was a crap <laughs> this is what you see in the water you open you you flip the rock you find the crap i mean it's under the rock there's a dust and guys look at what happened now there's a limitation of the scholars knowledge there is a limitation we have to admit and the rock is the dust and none knows what is under the dust save allah Oof. that is the maximum we know stop after this point nobody knows anything save allah this is a very serious knowledge uh my friend dory uh, uh call you you want to call about the question about rape call no problem we will we'll take a break from the wheel and we can back we can come back to the whale story uh, after you call if you want <sighs> yeah there is dust under the water it's not mud because this is a special dust my friend what's wrong with you you never heard of dust under the water you think it's it's, a, it's you think it's mud right <laughs> because you are not you have no idea you have no idea in the water in the Middle East in the Middle East under the water there's dust no mud because dust there don't mix with water it's different our dust is, is dusty you know our dust is not like any dust I, I remember when I was in the Middle East you know my mother she do vacuum for with her vacuum machine which made made in the caves time you know like very noisy and she do vacuum and then we open the machine we don't see dust we don't see any dust you know we find like uh, 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 let us say it's kind of uh, mysterious <laughs> Oh, we got a call. Hold on. Hello. Hello, CP. Can you hear me? I hear you, my friend. How are you doing? How is your wheel doing? 
how is what doing? How is your wheel? <laughs> My wheel is doing just fine. That's wonderful. <laughs> and how is your ball doing? <laughs> <laughs> My ball's doing fine. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, the funniest thing to me, the funniest part of this whale story is that the whale is named Lewis. <laughs> Louis, Far Louis Farrakhan, you know, <laughs> this is <laughs> this, the best part. Just, uh, just a disclaimer. This, just a disclaimer. Louis, Louis is not Louis Farrakhan. Okay, Louis Farrakhan is different person. Just disclaimer. We don't want people to accuse it that we're accusing the Louis Farrakhan to be the same Louis. This is different Louis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. So this guy he forgot most, what he, this guy he forgot what he's calling me for he, he, he just forgot what he's calling for this is what Lewis Farrakhan did to him I mean like this is this is very Lewis call man I mean this is can you go Lewishly directly to the question otherwise uh, you are Lewis in, you are Lewis in everything <laughs> the name of the wheel is Lewis <laughs> okay um <laughs> all right here on to slightly more serious but I guess still stupid stuff um on the question of rape um i think what's missed here and i guess what i think needs to be discussed not so much of what is the punishment for rape um but actually more along the lines of what is the definition of rape what what, what, what is the reward what, the, because in Islam they reward you for rape he go muhammad he <laughs> rape he got the best two women in the town you know well, you're well but you know i'm looking at you know what is actually what is a rape what are the circumstances that constitute a rape in islam which we actually see that definition shifting in western society um i think to the detriment of the society but still here we're talking about islam um what has to happen for it to be considered a rape you know if you look at uh the deuteronomy scriptures we went over those verses give very clear rules as to where you are and who you are as to whether it's, well, it, it doesn't use the word rape, but as to whether or not it is an offense worthy of stoning and such. Right. It's clear on that, yep. you know, but you look at that in Islam, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm puzzled to, to see, you know, exactly when is it a rape? You know, if you can, if you can kidnap people into slavery, and you don't really have any duties to anybody who is not a Muslim, you know what? When is it a rape? You know, your wives are are expressly made lawful for sex, so you don't really have to consider your wife her feelings. Um, is is rape is rape what, lawful? Rape? <laughs> is raping is raping a wife lawful in Islam? Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's, it's well, not rape. You know. Secondly, if a man he rape a woman in Islam, what is the punishment? Where a Muslim can show me the punishment of rape? We showed him the story from the, uh, Omar al-Khattab, who forced a woman after a man he raped her. She is dying from hunger. He forced her to be considered herself as a wife for the man. And what is the yeah. dowry? The dowry is the food he gave her. Imagine the woman is right, dying but, from hunger. Yeah, but 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 more than that, though, I mean, before they consider, before they discuss what the punishment of rape is, you know, they have to say, well, they're going to say, well, that's not a rape. You know, it's 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 not about what the punishment of rape should be, as much as it is about whether this action constitutes rape or not. You know, what what is a rape? You know, if again. <laughs> If you can kidnap women into slavery, you know, how, I mean, it can't be a rape if you can expressly kidnap her and do what you want. It, it's it's not a rape. It's not a question of, you know, the rape. You see, the, the rape for the, the punishment for rape could be an execution. But if you can kidnap her and have your way and that's made expressly lawful, that's not a rape. So there's no punishment to be to be given out. You know, the problem is. Go ahead. Muslims do not know what is written in their books. Yeah. If they knew, they will not make any accusation against the book of the Jews 
because they themselves Muhammad was a copy man he was a copy piece he's a he's a, he's a counterfeit of Judaism he is counterfeit of Christianity he's a counterfeit of the Sabi and he's a counterfeit of the of the Hindus he copied a lot of things from many people and because they are ignorant about what is written in their books they make stupid claims and then they get busted because shouldn't the Muslim ask him first himself based on the life of Muhammad how many Muhammad how many women he raped himself and was not considered as a rape how come the Muhammad himself he do Muhammad and the Muslims have a license for rape because taking a woman against her will and then forcing her to be your wife is what they are discussing that this is a stupid and this is bad so how come their prophet he did that they don't see it as a rape you see, I am not because against anyone. Let, let us say, let us say you are a person who don't like this law. No problem, you know. But you need to remember that this is what the law was for three thousand years ago, and people at that time have nothing. People used to do whatever they wish. So we are talking about yeah. a, a very advanced law, you know. Uh, not long time ago, people they used to eat each other in in, in Brazil, you know. The people yeah. they eat, they eat, they eat, they eat a human being. So. Uh, uh, we if you want to be intelligent if you want to be smart if you want to be just how long ago people used to own slaves not long you know people yeah. they own slaves and they rape their slaves and this has happened all around the world not only it happened by european it happened by the, the arab it happened by everybody everybody do the same crime but the question is why muslims don't see what is inside the box of islam so they go and they dig in a book written 3,000 years ago trying to find something they don't like and try to make you believe that this is a bad religion and they are the one who have a better thing. Okay, what is the better thing? Show us. Show me Muhammad. He came long after Moses. Which means Muhammad have no excuse to violate such a law. The law here says it clearly, you know, that a man he raped a woman, she is married, he will be put to death. Sophia was married woman, he killed her husband, and he raped her in the same day. So, according to the, the, the Old Testament, Muhammad is a criminal and he should be killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. This is yeah. the law you are making fun of. It's to bring justice more than Islam. Muhammad himself is a criminal. Why, why Muhammad is allowed to marry a woman or to call her a marriage? Or to call that marriage a rape as a marriage when he is the one who took her in the same night the same day and he raped her after he killed her husband what kind of justice that is right right and he allowed his followers to rape the women while the husbands were still alive yeah oh see but, more than just you know they look in the book three thousand years at least three thousand years old to try to find something that they like but what we find in that text, that 3,000 year old text, which is some 2,000 years older than Islam, it's still categorically better. We cannot compare than what you find in Islam. We cannot compare. Actually, the whole Quran, there's not even a single verse for rape. Who is the Muslim? Want to give me a call right now and show me the verse about rape? Which verse is speaking about rape? They will say to you the punishment of uh, do, do mischievement. In Islam is a uh, is a crucifixion and cutting their hands, but there is nowhere. This story is about a bunch of men who they took supposedly animals from Muhammad and they killed killed the shepherd. That was not about a rape. So they say to they say to you, uh, you know that this is about this is the only solution we have for 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 rape, but this is not is not about anything this is about somebody going against Muhammad and waging war against Muhammad and if this is the case the punishment of rape is death in Islam why Muhammad was not killed why his men were not killed how many how many women the Muslims they raped during the life of Muhammad so um, what do they say actually the Quran says the Quran said it's forbidden for you Women already married, except your slaves. Right. What does that mean? You know. And if we ask the Muslims, who are they, those women? They say those are the one we capture in war. Okay. Is that a rape or not? Remember, she is not your wife. 
Hmm? Right. This is not a wife. This is a woman you rape. Well, and then she's married. In the Quran, yes. Even if she is married, <laughs> you know, it says here in chapter in chapter four, verse number twenty-four. It's forbidden for you women already married, except, except the married the slave. married one, which means they are married, but because they are right hand possess, you can rape them. So married women are forbidden for you, but if she is a woman, she is married and she is married to an uh, enemy of Allah we can rape her and we can take her as sex slaves and this is not even a wife yet so right, the, well. the Muslim they have double standard in their in their logic but mostly the Muslim they play the game of you know you do not know so we try to fool you you know yeah read with me here carefully and forbidden to you are wedded women those with the spouses that you should marry them before they have left their spouses be the Muslims be, be the, the Muslims free women or not all right now here he continues saying uh, save what which means ex ex the exception of what Save what your, your right hand process on by of uh, own of capture slave girl whom you may have sexual intercourse with her even if they should have a spouse among the enemy camp you see it is that a rape a woman she is married she have a husband her husband is alive and they knew and they remember those Muslims they know each other okay this is right, the same this is the same a tribe became two to part now so they are friends. They used to be friends yesterday. Actually, they came to Muhammad and they asked him, you know, those women, we knew their husband. They are our friends. We know their husbands. So should right, we... Right. The, men, the men were hesitant. <laughs> yeah, the, the men, they were hesitating to, to, to rape them because we know their husbands. They are, they are ashamed. Like, imagine I know you and then I want to rape your wife. So now we are Muslims. They are not. We are fighting. But should we rape their women? Is that okay? Muhammad, he said, yeah. You have no problem with that. Yeah. And he made this verse to say to them, go ahead and rape them. So what? So how you say, how you claim that you Muslims don't agree with forcing a woman to marry from a man who he raped her. <laughs> but you are not, you are not even in this case, he is not even married them. They are raping them without marriage. Which one is more ugly to make the woman wife? Or to make her sex a slave and you can exchange her with your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> the Muslim they have something, it's called Isti'aratul Furuj. Isti'aratul Furuj, which means borrowing a vagina. The women they don't call them even women, they call them vagina. So if you have if you have a woman slave in your house, you can, you know, uh, uh, you can exchange them with me. We find the here we go any Muslim any Muslim he don't believe that Muslims are allowed to borrow vagina give me a call right now I will make you read with your, with your own eyes on the screen life I will show you your scars in the videos. Actually, the videos in front of us is speaking about borrowing a vagina. And in not only that, some of them they allowed that you can borrow a vagina of a wife, not necessarily a slave. Not necessarily a slave. <laughs> All those links in the front of me, I just typed the word is the al Furuj. I did not search for something, you know. The word Furuj means vagina. Vaginas, like a pearl name. All right. Okay. And you will see the Sunni and the Shia, they are exposing each other about borrowing vaginas. Both of you have it. Any Muslim have a, he have an, he oppose what we are claiming? Hmm? No Muslim. Look until now we don't have any Muslim too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody nobody uh, nobody uh, opposing you know the 
the madness of Islam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, CP, um, on this topic again, hmm. uh, have, having sex with your slaves, your right hand possessed. Now, that can, well, as it's written, or at least as I read it in English, that's actually legal in the other direction, meaning a, a woman could have sex with her slave. No, you see, there's a, well. there's, a, there's a hadith about the women. She did that. Muhammad, he put her to death. There's a woman. She tried to do that. Uh, I can't find you the hadith. Uh, a woman, she tried to practice that verse. She thought she can do it herself because she's a Muslim and she have a slave. And the Quran says it, <laughs> that she can. Yeah. So... <laughs> So she practiced that and Muhammad he put her to death because this is a license only for Muslim men And here you see the hypocrisy of Muhammad yeah. So a man he can have sex with his sex slave or his capture slave or even both slaves But a woman she cannot do that and actually that woman she did not even uh, uh, do uh, uh, You know like uh, have sex with the slave she 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 wanted to marry him some story they say that they beat her, you know. Some story they say they put her to death because she stepped already. So she wanted to marry, not to have sex. Some story they say no, she wanted to have sex with him. However, why the man he can do it, the women she cannot, because this is a man made religion made by the man for the benefit of the man. Yo, um, are you looking for that hadith? Uh, let me see. I did not look yet. I, uh, I want to. I need to reference that. But now I, I do want to. While you're doing that, I do want to be clear here. I did read the Quran correctly. If you go strictly by the Quran and the way it's written, that is legal for a woman to do that, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, strictly by the Quran. I understand that, you know. They don't, you know, why obey, why obey Allah when you got Muhammad? <laughs> but, uh, let's see how you're... According to what's written. <clears throat> I'm trying to find you the hadith about uh, women. Um... I will find you the hadith and I will, I will uh, because uh, this story, uh, I'm not sure if I can find it in English. Is it, uh, I want to say I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, but. Uh, would that be in Bukhari or Muslim or would it be in one of the others? It exists in many locations, actually. But okay. not sure if we can't find it in in the English version of it. Okay, you want to okay, hold on. Okay. Let us see. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to find the hadith but, uh, until now I found just uh, uh, the scholar's opinion uh, about but the story I could not find it yet okay uh, yeah but I will find it for you okay well, well yeah uh, you can if somebody else is trying to call we can move on and if I find it I'll um yeah yeah I will let you know. call back and shoot you a message or something like right. that okay my friend all right thank you thank you thank you uh, do we have any Muslim would like to call? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Any beautiful, smart Muslim? No? 
So always take a note that when the Muslim they speak about something they don't like in your book, most likely it is located in their book and in, in their history. Because Muhammad, he did everything wrong you can imagine in the world. You see, I cannot find one thing about this man is right. Even he claimed that his cousins, they raped him. This is his claim. And no Muslim can explain to us what he mean by that. When they came to visit him, he claimed that I don't want to see them because he, he said, وَأَمَّا إِبْنُ عَمِّي فَقَدْ هَتَكَ عَرْضِي هَتَكَ الْعَرْضِ in Islam is ripping the owner by sex. Ripping the owner of somebody by doing sexual act. So how, what he did? How his cousin did that? Everything about this man is wrong. A man, Muhammad, he is kissing a man going inside his clothes and the, the prophet is wearing nothing and the man is wearing nothing and they are, he is kissing him in the side of his belly and the man, he says, yes, prophet, yes, prophet, right there, right there, don't stop. I mean, how we can explain that? He was a rapist, he was a criminal, he was a thief, he was a liar. Even his sex was a fantasy, is not real. Because the hadith says the Prophet used to imagine himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. What does that mean? He imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. So what he was doing exactly? So even his sex has no witnesses. How we can trust such a man? Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> any Muslim would like to give me a call? Our Skype is open and we will be happy to take your call. Anyone? So don't complain Muslims about something you practice and the Bible does not say that you force a woman to marry you. They are forcing the man to marry the women to fix something both they did because obviously this woman, she did not even report to her family or her relatives that this man or the community that this man, he raped her. She did not scream asking for help when this man, he took her down. Which means maybe he took her against her will in the beginning, but obviously after that she agreed with it. Or maybe the woman, she is under a stress that if she told her community, that will bring shame to her family, so she hide it. But still that's wrong, because now the criminal, he can get away with his crime. So this was a solution for a problem happened, was not a punishment for this female. If a man, he hold you from your hands and he start kissing you and he put you in the floor, but you never scream. What does that mean? And you say to him, no, 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 that you want to push him away, but you don't scream. You don't, why you, why you don't scream? Let us see, he did that. He finished with you. He raped you. Why you don't tell the people about, why you don't call the police? Why you don't kill tell the community? So they try always to give you a false understanding of what the Bible speak of to make it fit with their own agenda when their Quran and their prophet is the biggest rapist in history. He is the one who forced women to be his wives after he raped them, not before. Like Muhammad, he did not go to Safiya and he says to her, do you like to marry me? No, he raped her first. When, when Omar speak about this woman who was walking in the desert and she was dying from hunger and she came to Omar complaining that this man, he forced her into sex. What, what sorry, not Uthman, Omar. Uh, uh, what Omar he did? 
he consider that this man who forced her into rape a husband that is your practice any Muslim any Muslim would like to call Shahrazad Ali look who is talking if you are let's see who is the coward call me then Ali Shahrazad call me why you don't call me let's see who is the coward what do you think guys the one who don't call and make a challenge life he is the coward call us let us see who is the coward do you there I am the coward and I'm waiting for you to call me who is the coward And the second I mention his name, his text to stop. He might leave now. And, and very easy to figure out. This is what the, the onion head he said. Christian Prince, you are very easy to figure out. As long as I'm very easy to figure out, call me. His master Paul. He, here we go, guys. Look what this guy he said. Let me show you how stupid the Muslims and they are certified. I'm not insulting, by the way. This is not an insult. Every Muslim is a stupid entity. He proved that he is not uh, 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 by choice. Why you? Why you blocked him? Why? Why, my, my friend? Why? If we block the Muslim from saying what they are saying, what what the benefit? Unblock him. Why you delete his text? Come on. If every Muslim would say something will, will, is, is not good, we we delete his text. Then that's not why we are here to, to talk to, to Muslims. Let him say, express his mind. This Abdul, he have a problem with Paul. Now, how stupid the Muslims are to say and to mention the name of Paul. And this is my challenge to Mr. to Shahrazad. Shahrazad usually is a name of a female, but I don't know. Some Muslim they use female names for themselves. Mr. Shahrazad or Miss Shahrazad, I don't know if you are a male or a female. Can you explain to me why Paul is a bad person? Can you explain to me why Paul is a bad person? Who is the brave Muslim can explain to us why the Muslims, they hate Paul? It's a challenge. Just to show you the ignorance of this nation. Anyone? Show here we go. Show your face, coward. <laughs> yeah, he changed the topic. Okay, Allah is a coward. Otherwise, show me your face, Allah. I am like your Allah. When Allah he show his face, I will show my face. And you stupid Muslims, aren't you posting pictures in your website saying this is me? So what do you mean show your face? So who is that guy you post his pictures there? That's not me? Coward? Liars? Ah, liars. Now answer Abdul. Why Paul is a bad person for you, Abdul? Guys, let me show you how stupid every Muslim is. When a Muslim, he attacked Paul. Shouldn't we ask them why Muhammad never attacked Paul? Let us analyze this this uh, this uh, statement the Muslim they say Paul is the master of a Christianity Paul is the one who created the Christianity that's mean that Muhammad was an idiot and he was a stupid and he was ignorant and he was a foolish man to the point he never mentioned anything bad about Paul but the Muslims today are smarter more educated they are the true prophets of Islam not like the idiot Muhammad who have no idea anything about Paul otherwise you need to tell me why Muhammad never say a word about Paul any Muslim can explain any Muslim can explain to us if Paul was bad why Muhammad never said Paul is the problem I'm sure you have no answer because you are a big fat potato and you have no answer right that's the whole story i cannot say a name properly 
Okay, call me, call me. Let us see if you can say the name of your prophet properly. Call me. It's a challenge. I want to hear you saying the name of your prophet properly. Should I show you the Muslim who was saying taking shahada? He was saying, Madam, 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 Madam. You are just a kid. We give you more time. Now, who is the next Muslim? Ignore this guy. Don't block him. Let him say whatever he wants. Who is the Muslim want to give me a call? Who is a Muslim is willing to give me a call? And feel free to talk about anything you wish. Huh? Actually, you know, if we if we ask the Muslims about showing face, if we ask Muhammad to show his face, what we will see? We will see a guy he lost at least 12 teeth. And you can imagine how funny he is. Is that correct? Is that correct, Muslims? That your prophet from the beginning of Islam, he lost most of his front teeth. How he can recite the Quran? What? <coughs> A prophet reciting the Quran correctly without teeth? Are you sure? Huh? This is the prophet of Islam. How we can do it? Any Abdul? A prophet without teeth all his front teeth are gone I mean that's amazing how he was reciting the Quran any Abdul Take your teeth if you have a grandmother or grandfather, take off their fake teeth and let us see what they can say. I want you to recall your grandfather without teeth reciting Quran. Any Abdul? And by the way, this is from the beginning of Islam. Muhammad he lost his teeth from the beginning. Hmm? So when did your prophet taught you about Buluth? What he said? How how he say Buluth? Buluth, Bathloth, Bathloth. You know Bathloth. This Bathloth. Why Muhammad never mentioned the name of Paulos or Paul? Idiots. Who is the brave Muslim would like to give us a call? We will give you a cigar, like the Prophet Muhammad. You will debate me anytime if I show you my face face to face guys face to face so you see you see you see the Muslims they can debate me but only face to face okay let us go to the street <laughs> you eat it so why you are in the internet Abdul why you are in the internet if you want to do it only face to face is it the internet face to face hello Coward, do we have any Abdul in the bushes? Who is a brave Muslim is willing to give us a call? <clears throat> hmm? Any Abdul? I don't know. I sometimes I, I I I see that the Abduls are the last one to know what's happening. They grow a beard, but they do not know anything about the religion. Nobody can answer anything. Nobody knows anything. There are people who have a big mouth, but the second you question what they just say, just say it. Like now you said, Paul. Can you explain to us? No, he cannot. 
You accuse Paul. Can you explain to us? You cannot. Like you know, Shabir Ali, he always speak against Paul, right? But can Shabir Ali show us one statement of Islamic books speaking against Paul? If his prophet and the companion of Muhammad never spoke against Paul, so how Shabir Ali is more knowledgeable than his prophet about Paul? The only answer for that, Muhammad was an idiot who do not know anything or he think Paul is a good guy. Actually, in the Islamic books, Islamic reference, as an example, Ibn Kathir mentioned clearly that Paul was a messenger of Allah. He was sent by Isa. Who is the Muslim want to see and read for us by his own mouth that Paul is a messenger of Allah according to Islam? Who is the Muslim want to do that? Any Muslim? Is that true or making we are making things up? Cowards. So why you attack Paul day and night? I will tell you why. Because you are a donkey. You are a copy paste. None of you even ask himself a question. Why the Prophet of Islam never mentioned Paul wrongly? Why? Maybe he never heard of him. Maybe you are more educated than him. Maybe Muhammad, he need to go to school and learn about Christianity before he open his mouth. Not like you, you are educated. Yeah, obviously. Muhammad, he have no idea. However, if we go in the books of Islam, we will find that Paul, as we said, he is a messenger of God. And this is written by Muslim scholars, not by us. Isn't it amazing? They call Paul names all over. You will not find one Muslim site don't have an article against Paul. But in their scholars' websites, sorry, in their scholars' books, Paul is a messenger of Allah. Not only that, he is one of the most strong messenger. If we go to Ibn Kathir, let us do that live in front of your eyes. I mean, why not? Let us expose the idiots. If we go to Ibn Kathir as an example, just to show you this is not our own interpretation and not even our translation. And we go to chapter 36. <clears throat> Read carefully, Shahrazad. Oh, I forgot Shahrazad. She is a female. She cannot read. Islam is haram for women to read. It, it, it says in the hadith, teach him only how to swing and clean dishes. All right. And when we send to them two messengers, they deny them both, mean they has tend to be disbelieve in them. So we string them, we reinforce them with the third. Okay, who is the third? Read carefully, Abdul. Read carefully, Abdul. Ibn Juraj narrated from Wahab ibn Sulaiman from etc. from etc. The name of the first two messengers were Shamun, which means Simon, and Yohanna, which means John. And the name of the third was Bolos, and Bolos is the Arabic name for Paul. But the stupid Abdul, they call Paul bad language do you see it abdul this is the book of ibn kathir this is in your scholar book and the one is reporting this hadith is from the sahaba supposedly this is from the companions of your prophet so why you muslims attack paul when your your scholars they praise him to say that he is one of the most powerful messengers of god sent by the messiah yeah, I remember you. Yeah, the one. Are you the one who? Uh, are you the sister of the guy who called me, Sharazad? You are the sister, right? Call me. Why you don't call me? What What's your name? What's your name in Skype? Huh? Let us read the Bible. Let us read the Bible. <laughs> Sharazad. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> 
any Abdul would like to call I never saw a Muslim who don't expose me I mean I'm exposed left and right they are powerful man so now are you going to answer Abdul's about Paul as a messenger of the Messiah and by the way based on your scholars Jesus must be God why because if he's not how Paul became a messenger of Allah any Muslim can explain how Paul became a messenger of God it says there actually that those are the messengers of the Messiah read with me carefully <clears throat> and the city was in Turkey all of us we know the story how the messenger of the Messiah they went to Antakya and Antakya is the first city who became a Christian city what do you say be carefully here do you see the story any Abdul <clears throat> so they have big mouth speaking against Paul but they do not know that it is in their book that Paul and John and Simon those are three messengers of God who is the one who made them not only that by the way do you know that those messengers they made miracles Paul according to the Quran Paul and John and Simon they did miracle how they can do miracles any Muslim can explain to me how the messengers of the Messiah can make miracles any Abdul okay you are just being silly now let me block you and go we give you time we give you all the chance to come and to call us and to talk to us like an adult you are just being an idiot get lost like your prophet actually I'm reading the name correctly and you are the one who do not know how to read the name because all those names are written in Arabic you idiot you are the one who will not be able to read this name or this name or this name because when you read it Johanna there's nothing it's called Johanna Johanna it is Johanna in English you don't have the letter ha and you don't have it in your language the name here is not Shamun it is Shamun and the name here is not Bolos as it's written here it's a Polos but the stupid Muslims they think it's a bullos. Any Abdul. So after after here, if we go to the verses after, we will find how those messengers they were able to accomplish miracles. How this happened? How they accomplish miracles? Any Muslim can tell us? Any Abdul? How Paul was able to make miracles? Read with me the miracles. Hmm? How this happened? They challenged them. That if you don't do miracles in the front of us, we are going to kill you. We are going to do what? We will kill you. And what those messengers they did, the messenger of the Messiah, they did perform miracles, including what? Including resurrecting people from death. Is that true? potatoes 
any Muslim want to tell me that those people did not do miracles? Who is the Muslim want to do that? Anyone? A Muslim talking about racist. Do you want me to show you what the racist Islam teach? The racist Islam teach that in the judgment day, all Muslim will be white and all non-Muslim like me will be black. And by the way, I don't mind to be black. Finally, uh, women, they would like me because they like black men. Hello? Finally. What kind of religion make all believers white and all disbelievers black and what kind of a prophet he say that Allah he created all white people from the right shoulder of Adam and all the black people from the left shoulder of Adam and all the black people will go to hell and all the white people will go to heaven huh you, a Muslim talking about racism are you serious if we go to chapter in the Quran, the chapter of the ants, even ants have chapter. You know, you feel like the Quran is like a zoo. Where is okay? Hold on, thirty-two. <sighs> 27 here we go we go to verse 83 okay 82 all right what will happen in the judgment day in the judgment day Allah will send us a cockroach this cockroach is a huge beast and this beast he will speak Quran it's like a big cow but speaking Quran okay and this beast is going to have a special kind of description or let us say a feature uh, you see all those hadith about this beast this beast is one of the signs of the judgment day but what this beast will do read carefully the beast will emerge from the earth and with it will be the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman which means Solomon Peace upon them both. It will strike the nose of the disbelievers with the staff and it will make the face of the believer bright with a ring. And the fact doesn't say bright, it says white. How we can get that busted? If you go down, it's given us more explanation. It says, it will make, there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will be spread until all his face is white shining white do you see it guys do you see it so all the believers allah will make them shining white not only white i mean shiny come on he will polish your whiteness and then as a result will be no there's no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will spread until his face is black as a result. Do you see it, guys? Is it showing to you? And you speak about racism? So we have a God. He will make all Muslims white. I mean, how beautiful that is. Obviously, this God, he consider us. Uh, if we are black, it's a penalty. It's a penalty to be black. It's a reward to be white. Do you see it? Is that my book, Muslims? Is that my scholar? Is that my Quran? Why you lie? So wherever you go, we are going to get you busted. Yeah, I don't mind to be black. What's wrong with being black? Seriously, I mean, what's what, what's the problem with being black? What's wrong? You will become like a, not a human. You will have like uh, six fingers, ten fingers. What happened? But because Islam made everyone believe 
that being a black this is why the black stone became a black because of sin it was whiter than milk but sin made the black stone black which means sin and black is going together and now Allah in the judgment day for we commit sin refusing him what he would do the first penalty he would do to us he will make us all black and man oh man <clears throat> I am going to I'm going to have a uh, have a phone line and give my numbers to all women in the world because now it's finally I'm black and I will receive phone calls from girls I mean isn't it time that's not even fair any Abdul what's wrong with being black Abdul explain to us why Allah will make the bad ones black This is why you know when you speak to Muslims, you will be you'll find yourself speaking all over, like about everything. Because Muslims they jump like monkeys from place to place. They cannot answer you about rape. So they jump to speak about your face. Then they jump to speak about your leg. Then they jump to speak about racism. Then they jump about uh, you know, they, they they will be all over the place because they are suffering the same as their prophet from the flight of thoughts. They cannot answer you, so they have to change the topic. But doesn't matter wherever you go. I'm going to get you busted. Try it. Thank you for those who they are making donation. I really appreciate your help. God bless you. However, don't think if you give me donation, I will make you white. Hello. <laughs> don't try. Huh? Allah will not make you white. I'm telling you. You have to make more donation. Maybe if you make donation like bigger donation, I can call Allah and I speak because I speak Arabic, as you know, and then he will make you white. Try it, you know. The one who pay higher in the donation, Allah will make him whiter. Here we go. We have a deal. The more you, the more you donate, the whiter you will be. What do you think? Imagine I am God, and I say to you, if you don't donate to me, I will make you black. This is God. This God is doing whitening business. black and white the whole earth is divided to two kind black and white and the black will go to hell and the white they will go to heaven according to Muhammad how in the world you can follow such a God hmm? any Muslim have an objection Hmm? No, if you donate, if you donate one dollar, like we will, we will, we will make you like you will lose some black. You know, you will be like a little bit white. Depend, depend. You know, you have to come on. You know, do something. You can do better. Any Abdul? No, no, no I blocked him. I blocked him. He is not trying. This guy is a brave, but he is uh, he is here just to insult. I blocked him. I'm not going to waste my time with a, with a kid. You want to talk to me? Talk to me. The Muslims are complaining. I do not know how to say the name properly. I mean, I never saw a Muslim. He knows how to say the name, the name of his prophet properly. Not the name of the neighbor. Especially those who don't speak Arabic, for sure. And Abdul? You know, look like the God of Islam, he never heard that white people, they like to have a tan color. They like to get dark skin. He never heard of, of people doing that. People, they spend money to get darker. Allah want to make you whiter, what you can do. You go to the gym, you sit in the machine to get a dark skin, and then you come out, Allah, he make you white again. I mean, that is horrible. I Allah, I just spend money to make myself darker. No, you are a believer. All the Muslims, they have to be white. There is no way. This is God and this is religion. And who is going to make us white and black? I wish it is Allah. It is a beast. And if you read, if you read the description of this beast, read carefully. 
also recorded by Ibn Majah, Ibn Juraj, etc. Okay, it says, describe the beast said, its head like the head of a bull, its eyes like the eyes of a pig, its ears like the ears of an elephant. Like, what the head? Elephant? Are you serious? This beast have a, a, a ears of elephants? I mean, why he did not take the tail of the elephant instead of the ears? Why the ear? Why the ear? Why the ear? They are the ear of the elephant. Let us continue. So now we have the head of a bull, eyes of a pig. Pig? I thought pig is bad. Ears like the ears of elephant. Its horns like the horns of a stag. Its neck like the neck of an ostrich. Its chest like the chest of a lion. Its color like the color of a tiger. Its hunches are like the hunches of a cat. Its tail like the tail of a ram. Its legs like the legs of a camel. Like, what the heck? Look like Allah. He put all the zoo in a mixer. You know, mixer? Allah, he got all the zoo, all the animals in the zoo. And he mixed them together. And he come with this beast. The eye from the egg, the tail from like, what? What is that? Huh? I don't know. This description remind me of Ahmadinejad somehow. Look like clothes. Any Abdul? Any brave Abdul? All right. Look like today we don't have really too many Abdul. Uh, tomorrow we will be here again at 430. So please tell your friends and join us every day, every day except Monday. I give Monday like as a as a break for you guys from me. So you, you rest. So we do it every day, including Sunday, Saturday, etc. So we are doing four now every day at 4:30. Uh, sometimes Sunday we do it early because people they are at home and maybe Saturday too. But usually every day around between four and four thirty we start, and then we stay two hours, three hours depend. All right. So tell your friends, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos with your friends and your family. Uh, this is a free education, free school. Uh, yes, some people, they help by donation, but you don't have to, you know. The Lord is my provider, and I appreciate really those who do help, you know, for sure, uh, all of us who need support. However, it's a free education, free school. Uh, I have thousands of videos in the Internet for free. And if you like to know more and learn more and get reference in your hand, you can go to Amazon.com and you can search for my books. Just type Christian Prince and you will find a list of my books. And soon we will have my new books about uh, sexuality in Islam will be published. And the name of the book will be Sex and Allah. I made the name short and direct. So, you know, I don't want to make a long name. So it is about sex. And about Islam so the name of the book will be six and Allah is going to be out very soon it's going to be two volumes the first book is uh, they will be published together not one after one so you can if you want you can purchase both together the first one will speak about sexuality and the Arab before Islam and then going through Islam and what the Islamic idea of sexuality and how Muslim they understand sex and you will learn a lot of things you never heard of before then we will move to sexuality and uh, as a motivation for Muslims to go to heaven. Uh, that will go in details of Muslims believe uh, uh, about sex in heaven and what it is about. And you will learn a lot of stories and everything will come with details. With details. Which means you will have a handy reference in Arabic and in English right in the front uh, of you. Uh, so those even if you want to make an article about it or you want to study or you want to debate a muslim you will have a very powerful uh, reference you know my book is uh, let us say it's a box of reference and between the reference is 
uh, let us say uh, I try to make you uh, uh, think with me about how we can think and how we can understand those reference all right so uh, I hope soon we will have it out maybe 10 days from now something like this until then I say may the Lord bless you and I invite the Muslims to call me tomorrow after 4 30 p.m invite your friends if you have somebody he claimed to be a scholar somebody from those who do dawa someone he think he can answer us and refute us please give us a call show us how wrong we are and show us how truthful you are until now we could not even find one muslim can tell us even who is allah and what is islam a question which never been answered and will never be answered for muslims are the last one to know who is their god and what Islam is about. Thank you for being with us. May the Lord bless you all. And we we'll see you tomorrow at 4:30. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. And see you soon again. Bye bye.